to even keep it competitive like it was on map number one. So I think just trying to stretch it for as much as possible. But for me, this should be another comfortable showing from Linvision. Well, GR will be on the T side star, and we have seen how T side of this map can be at times. If there was one half, but they would be able to uh, turn the situation around and try and get some decency, it would be here and now. We get started with the pistol early, and it's a one for one with all sorts of forces engaging out towards that elbow position. Zach is still standing in with a double, looking for the triple extends a little bit too far back, so QQ can bring it into a two versus two. Emilia known, and now Westmelon is as well. Bombs on his back though, needs that backup for mediocrity to get it into the bomb site. Now Westmelon even anticipating a slight overextension towards that temple side, jiggling down, getting that first kill. The Glock could not find the trade, and now the CTs can double up so they can peek together. But Westmelon doesn't even need that assistance. Gets those last couple of kills. Very heavy mid stack, and I tell you what, pretty even when it came to the trading game. You had three out there towards the mid doors, back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, in the two v two, Linvision worked together, and GR are not able to even get close to a bomb site. Locked down. And that is the kind of dominance that we're expecting to see from LVG at certain periods. It was still a decent set of traders there from GR. But lack of bomb plants again going to come back to bite the T side and we'll be down a forced into the second round anyway. Tech 9's up. P250's out. G's SMG is forward contacting. We'll get removed in the one for one. Salo can follow up on his teammate, but Starry and Zach can still hold those trades together and they keep control of the bomb site. Starry, especially now, out towards Wii QT, knowing exactly where the man is. The Deagle will turn it into two players in LVG. It's a bit of an expensive round. Ooh. Zach, are you alright? <laughs> it looks like a bit of a DC here for Lynn Vision. I think, yeah, no, both players aren't moving. Oh, no. Yeah, I've, that's uh, not good at all. Well, uh, <laughs> okay, Dweg, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to convert to Christianity because I just saw a miracle happen right in front of my <laughs> eyes. I mean, what a clutch! One v three, get in! <laughs> <laughs> just That's some very... sick, sick frags. Yeah. <laughs> That's very unfortunate there for LVG. Uh, I imagine that uh, a pause is going to come through. Yeah, in we'll a get second, a stop goal. So, yeah, ra ra round three is not live. It doesn't seem. Uh, yeah, that that that's very unfortunate because outside of that moment, that 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 was uh, well, pretty much I, the, the kind of perfect round you want from LVG in that circumstance. I imagine for Lin Vision, they're either on LAN or in a hotel boot camp or like somewhere together because obviously they're they're playing on LAN tomorrow, so they they've they've got to have already been travelled. They did some media photo shoots, I think, either this morning or yesterday, so they're definitely playing together somewhere. And uh, whether it be like the mini fridge being plugged in, it's just wiped everything out. There's been something. Um, yeah, I mean, very good defensive down towards that uh, that A site because you can just see they got locked out straight away. The 1v3 had to try and come through from rugs. Gets that first kill on Dastari and then, uh, and then a double DC. Yeah, then mini fridges can be a little bit mental sometimes, I've noticed. Yeah. Now, I, I want to ask, Jay, size-wise, what do you think the perfect size is for a mini-fridge? Um, for a mini-fridge? Um, I reckon at least 30 centimeters in um, from, from left to right. Le I don't know, length, depth. Well, not height. I, I suppose length, right? I mean, see, I I'm the kind of person that... You, you know, you ever seen those gaming rooms where they have, like, the mini-fridge that fits, fits under your desk and it sort of fits the height? It's not very <laughs> mini, I guess, but... Yeah, yeah. Like, that that, that, that's that's the kind of thing that I sort of look at. The one with the glasses and you've got like, the glass on the front door and you've got all of the... Uh, uh, all the well, he's wearing a, wearing a pair drinks. of sunnies, is he? <laughs> yeah, mate. Just, just get that Monster Energy sponsorship going. Uh, so. Yeah, true. I've seen, I've seen a lot of those in the past. Yeah, actually, I remember when I was a teenager and I didn't have this kind of... Jeez, oh, that, that was a while ago. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, I didn't have like one of those kind of fridges, but we had like one of those generic uh, small mini fridges and I was trying to be like the ultimate, like, you know, edgy gamer back mm. in those days. So I had my PC and my mini fridge plugged into the same uh, extension cord. And, oh, uh, no. Yeah, that that that, that didn't yeah. go well. So when, yeah. when, we, when we say them. that kind of stuff as a joke, we, we is grounded very much in reality as to what can happen. So uh, th don't do not do that if you're at bootcamp. Do you know, another thing to also say is use UK plugs, best plugs in the world. Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah no, sure, well, that, as, as, sure, I'm, I'm quite being patriotic there because <laughs> I, I stand by the UK plugs. Anyone that's been to, to Europe or Asia and you've got your, your different three prong and your two prong, nothing is like the UK plug. Well, in terms of defending against uh, electrical hazards, obviously yeah, it didn't work yeah. in my case. Uh, so I definitely want to add some surge protectors in there as well, just to make doubly sure. But yeah, you're, you are right. I, I do appreciate the three-prong uh, plugs in the UK.
Um, I think we're the only country that does them as well. Like I know that we, obviously well, in Europe it's standardised to the two prong. But. No, we've got three prong at Oz, but I think it's a different of like the grounding because we've we've got um, two prong at the top and then one at the bottom. And oh, then obviously right. in the UK it's two at the bottom and then the grounded one at the top. So mm. um, slightly different and diagonal as well. Yeah. Well, I am being informed as well that uh, uh, the issue is a network issue and not a, uh, a mini fridge problem. So fortunately, gotcha. an internet no, one. We're very yeah. familiar with those ones. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely, sure, mate. <laughs> I, I certainly am. My, my my internet doesn't really like to work when it needs it to work, but uh, fortunately, no issues today on my side. So yeah, we'll get them connected back up, and hopefully, they'll be into the server in no time at all. We did see them start to join uh, when the uh, not live was called up, so. Uh, uh, hopefully they'll be ready to go in a short few moments' time. Uh, I believe that second round will stick as well because the rule book states obviously damage and, and past the minute mark, yeah. and obviously so many players sure. fell. So yeah. again, it's unfortunate for for Lin Vision, but that is the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, and I, I suppose for their sake, I mean, it's it's kind of the worst case scenario is is winning pistol and losing the anti force buy. Um, so double eco status for their sake, they'll have to buy it up and and try and see if they can work a deagle. Five seven kind of round. I mean, only on fourteen hundred money. Uh, it's going to be very tight to get as much investment forward as possible. And I think for for GR, you've you've got to take every opportunity as it comes. Yeah, mm. that that might not be a circumstance that you were expecting, but you forced by the second round. You've come out on top. Okay, turn it into two rounds in a row, three rounds in a row. Maybe win the opening <laughs> rifle, and then you've actually got a bit of a game on our hands. I mean, you, you kind of have the right mentality there. You just take it as it comes and you make sure that you lock down you, your opportunities. When you have those opportunities, make yeah, sure yeah. you capitalize upon them. Because for, sure. for GR, they are on the back foot. They're on the back foot from the word go. That whole first half of, of the first map is proof in the pudding. And then that's not even considering LVG's state in the grand scale of, of Asian CS. So yeah, for, for, for GR, if you have this opportunity, if you've been gifted a lifeline, you take it and you run with it. And that seems to be... What they'll do here in round number three. They've got their guns in. Mac 10 on uh, uh, reminder, which uh, might be effective depending on how the uh, uh, helmet situation looks on LVG. Of course, a couple of players on double eco status in West Melon and Amelia. There is still a couple of players, or three players, in fact, with $3,000. So if they go well, for OG. a heavy invest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, oh I, okay, I see. <laughs> You're not quite. Okay. <laughs> Jeez, where did they get that money from? <laughs> Jeez, where do they get that money from? Oh, that's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least G will have a little something to play with if they go whole hog in this one. And Lin Vision again, I mean, their whole objective is to not only qualify to EPL from this season of ECL, but to get into the grand final again like they have the last couple of times. Season 44, they mm -hmm. won the entire thing. They beat Wings up 3-0 in the grand final. They qualified to EPL season 18. And then the very next season, they beat Rare Atom in the upper bracket final and then lost them 2-3 in the grand final in a best of five. So we know that they're consistently making it to grand final appearances. I think as well, um, for anyone at home that were following the, the IM China uh, closed qualifier, that was great to kind of see uh, Wings Up and, and Tai Lu on LAN and, and also in sort of a, a crowd environment. That's something that we don't get to see that often in the, in the APAC division. So I'm sure... For Lin Vision, qualifying to IM China is going to mean a huge amount for these guys. Have we ever, excluding miners and and, and, and mm. RRs and stuff, have we, have we ever had like a, a, a LAN qualifier in Europe? Uh, In Europe? For like yeah. a close qual? Yeah, like a Jeez. close qual. Um, I don't I don't remember one, to be honest. Uh, it's very rare. Like, they're, they are kind of, um, of unheard of. Hmm. There probably is a few, like, here or there, um, but you, but, you probably... Again, excluding things like the miners and RMR yeah, and yeah, things yeah. like that. There's probably, those... like, one or two, but there, there's no... Like, it's not a frequent thing. That's mm. that's basically the, the message. And I mean, as well, like, uh, I remember IM Shanghai. Uh, what was it? 2019, I think it was, when uh, when it was 100 Thieves uh, got to the grand final against um, against Astralis. So I'm um, keen to keep an eye back on, uh, on IM China. Yeah, looking forward to returning to the uh, to, to the eastern regions in the mm. IEM circuit. So, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see whether LVG think... can do anything on home uh, on home territory as well, because obviously, they, yeah, they're qualified, they're going to that event, and there's well, going to be another tier one event which they're going to add to their tally. Yeah, I think as well, like just having IEM Sydney, I think the the Aussie crowd showed uh, showed exactly what the APAC region's all about, and even when I think about 
uh, DreamHack Melbourne that we had too. Um, there was quite a lot of Asian fans there that um, that are either studying in, in Oz or made the travel down to to support. And I know the, a few of the Chinese teams had like a good, uh, good crowd uh, basis around them. So I think being at home, especially with how the, the IEM trying to close Qual went, I mean, there's photos of that being absolutely packed. Um, so I imagine that um, the IEM China is going to be exactly the same. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a little bit early in uh, in our time zone, so uh, I'm not sure how much I can actually watch. But I'll definitely be keeping up. And see that, else see that's the thing, well. Jay, is because you don't know when when you grow up in APAC, when you grow up in that region, you just you are the time zone. Like you just you just change, and then once you move to Europe, or if you're not familiar with it, you go, ah, you know, too early. But when <laughs> when you're a when you're an Asian CS fan, basically every event is just the middle of the night or way early in the morning. Would you class OCE as Asia? Like, um, well, it, it's the APAC kind of region, isn't it? I mean, I wouldn't class it as Asia. Um, like Oceania is, is more where it sits. But in the past, we've had so much, I suppose, um, you know, correlation um, between OCE and Asian teams, whether it be at Nats and whether it be at international lands or qualifiers, that we're kind of we're, we're in the same sort of timeline um, uh, of Counter Strike as a region. I'll be looking forward again to see how LVG will do in that tournament. For now, uh, we've got much more immediate uh, concerns on our hands. LVG, of course, still looking to uh, work their way into the server. Seems like all five players are in, so hopefully we should be getting this started in a moment's time. So to recap again, second map, one-to-one -one on the board. LVG, victims of an unfortunate DC issue, and that second round will stand. So GR... An all-important lifeline, as we'll see what LVG are going to bring out. Again, many players on double eco status, so there will be a force invest. The Deagles across three, and Nova in for Starry. And that seems to be the only... Oh, no, the second Nova comes two in, so those are the only two weapons that uh, you can upgrade outside of the pistols. Yeah, I was I was surprised that G didn't go for, like, a FAMAS and armor. He's actually hasn't brought a huge amount down, probably trying to save some of that economy for the NWP come the opening rifle round of the game. Was proficient with it over on Ancient. His frag count wasn't all that high, but uh, he did hit some stellar shots. That impact might not be understated. Again, you've got Starry and actually G with the second shotgun. Crossfire is locked. Engagements are fine. They will get both of them down. The Deagle of Zaka able to come up good against one individual. The second Deagle has also been seen. West Mellon, the only man that's not on that A bomb site, and may receive resistance out towards B. Indeed, the main spring in from Reminder now has all the information for GR. The four on two advantage. Yeah, Lin Vision just got caught in a timing there. You could see that they were trying to stack up A main. You could see that they were trying to body up as many players as possible. Even the drop down from the Deag is unsuccessful. So Zach is going to be the last one left, hoping to hold on to that Deagle come the next round. But you, you just feel that if that Nova is able to tuck a little bit more, or maybe if the Deagle can take first contact, that could be a very different round. There were four players down there on the A site for Lin Vision. Yeah, unlucky for them in this case, though. We are second on the board for GR Gaming and a very rare lead that they've not been able to achieve so far in this series over the Lin Vision side. And the force buy involved, it should be extending to two rounds in the lead for them. Lin Vision. And just looking to stack up the money. And I think Zach will be the only player with anything outside of a, a USP in this round. Yeah, we've seen a little bit of Anubis coming down for GR over the course of, of this entire regular season. They got a win against F, uh, FYR, uh, which was um, a 16 um, to, to 13. Uh, quite a close game in the end there. Then, uh, oh, I should say 13 to, to 11. The only time we get the 16s now is it like the 16-14s, like the overtime results. Because mm. uh, sometimes you look at them and you go, hang on a sec, 16-14? It's not quite right. Then you remember there's overtime. It's a bit deceiving. I think it's yeah. going to take some more time getting used to. I mean, I'm still not fully, you know, involved or like fully like behind the idea that round number seven is winning the half as opposed to number it's, eight. It is crazy. Yeah, it really is. Quick face in these pistols, trying to see if they can win a second for the time being. Good for the first pick. Actually, that's starting with a TK, excuse me. So uh, not quite as good until he comes up and finally finishes the job on towards Salo. But outside of that casualty, everyone's pretty good over on the... Uh, GR camp, so mopping up the pistols, now look towards the rifles, and indeed there will be an AWP, that's why G saved his cash. 
And, and you've got to expect as well for G, he's going to be very versatile on that CT side, probably starting as like a couple of anchor roles on A, working that AWP out from the mid house and the mid doors, and then working himself out towards B. You'll, you'll see a lot of movement from him across the lad. The GR have got to look at this opportunity and use it as a slight bonus. You've got Reminder still onto that MAC-10, but you don't want to be throwing this round away. They're going to start with that AWP out towards the mid control, break the smoke and see nothing towards house early on. Slight gap to work with. It's ever so slight for Weak ET. M4, Zaka spotted one. Salo tagged up as the MAC-10 tries to engage the charge down this man. With the Molotov support, it will be able to find Zaka and kick things off in this round. Now, Zaka needed to escape a lot earlier than he did. Felt like he hung around way too long out there from the window control. A reminder, just putting the double volleys down from both the house position and from the door. Zaka just sitting duck. And now for Lin Vision, they're going to have to start not gamble stacking, but making a play somewhere. Having an overextension, keeping two towards A. Starry seeing nothing out towards E-Box, so it's good information. They can stack up mid and A right now. Push forward in towards main especially. Amelia alongside G, the Orb M4 combination. Amelia's going to start going to hear those footsteps as well. Engage one individual, the AWP get the trade back to a three on three. It's an Orb on Orb battle as well. Meanwhile, Reminder snuck in from mid, got a pick. We QT wins the Orb battle. And Starry with the shotgun is all alone, very far away from all this action. At least there's an M4 to play with, but a one on three from now. No, West Miller just getting caught flat-footed right there. Knife out on the rotation in from Temple, just gets caught in the open. And that AWP from G, I mean, once West Mellon goes down, you are stuck. You have to deal with players coming from A main. You have to deal with players coming in from camera. And you're just being swarmed from two sides of the bomb site. Yes, there was that duel up against the AWP of a bait from Starry out there towards E-Box to at least have to tell. There was a few footsteps and some noise being made outside of A. So there was definite information that it was going to be an A lean but not enough that could come through. Even Amelia with that first engage, only got one, could not multi-frag with the M4. A fourth round being gained. This is a perfect start from GR. Three to the good. Making good on their lifelines. No more lives left on LVG here. Money is again Concerning factor for this CT side, that M4 staying in going to be vital to what would otherwise be a very light investment, a half invest at best. And I think realistically for GR, there's got to be a minimum of eight rounds being gained if you want to cause a threat here on map two. So you even have to look at this next round and say, we can't give a lot to the CT side. We can't allow them to save any more rifles than what they have already. Starry's already gone down. That M4 to move from play instantly. G next to drop. Zaka does get a decent deagle shot into Reminder. Amelia cannot recover that M4. They can recover. Another good kill. We QT down. Mediocrity about to get faced down by three of the CT balls. 5-7 especially aggressive. Dinking down the man at one point in FL, giving Amelia a perfect chance to get a kill. There's a couple of rifles to play with. An AWP on Zaka. Amelia's going to stick around with the Eagle, try to hold the defensive and get shut down in an instant. Zaka set for the cross, lands on one. One versus one. The jump face will try to look for the information. But Salo is able to close the 2K in. Just hold on to the round for LVG. Denial there for the uh, pistols, although that was a very good effort. It was a very good effort. I think Lin Vision in the end will be a little bit disappointed in themselves that they didn't close it out. I mean, 2v2 with a couple of rifles to get picked up there from the mid control. You feel like that round is on. You feel like for a moment that you're going to be able to steal it away, even out towards the Bricks territory. That Deagle just gets annihilated on the first contact. A 1v1 does not quite come through from the ex orpa of Lin Vision. Zaka does not come through successfully, so a fifth round gets gained from GR. We QT aggressive in towards main. G's a little bit late to the reaction, but does catch Reminder in the end. So that's the advantage gained by LVG. Trying to find their turnaround round, trying to find their return fight. And get that second on the CT board. QQ God pressing on towards the bomb site, catching one play with the utility turn of the second. Amelia shuts him down. A solo play, and now even a trade out there towards the B site. But Starry saw on the jiggle the player out towards that right-hand side. So a rotation can come through. G with the NWP has to try and back up his teammate now. That HG at least denies the one player on the bomb side. 
Mediocrity has fallen to the big green, so Salo is all alone in his own clutch. 1v2 for GR this time. He's still watching with that AWP as well. But not watching the main position. No, he is. He catches the man in the end. Kill found with the second. And then Vision finally end the streak of GR. And that was going to have to be two rounds in a row in which Salo comes through with clutches. And you, you can't always rely on that one. I think you could just feel there the AWP's impact immediately. As soon as it comes through in that second rifle round, an opening pick gets rewarded out from mid, and then immediately you're repositioning. You're getting yourself back out towards that B side. You can't quite back up Starry, so you reposition again, get out to cave, and close that round down. Another buy going forward here from GR, but they will be reset on a few individuals if they can't come through with the victory. QQ again trying to make a solo play on the A site. We QT having none of it out towards Canal. Starry, similar peaks in an electric, and the kill gets found for GR. Yeah, that was very hyper aggressive to come through from Starry. And no flash, just the molly to try and peek in and around it. And without a teammate, he just loses the fight to the AWPA. Gives away an opening exchange. Starry was quiet out in that first game, being punished for a lot of mistakes. It's happening again here on Anubis. Minute on the clock. Salo cannot quite find G, but that does not matter. The peak into the orc does not land the shot. Dealt with on the B site as he falls, leaving no further defenders. And therefore, a round for GR. He just fell there for, for Starry. He's, he's let the team down in that round. The overextend doesn't work out successfully, and then G is playing pretty much alone on B. There's a little bit more of a heavier rotation towards mid and A. And he's in a position where he gets mollied. He's got two options, either fall back immediately or engage into a fight. He goes for the latter. He starts moving forward, doesn't hit that immediate shot, and that's it. Round's completely done. West Mellon could look for an exit. So can Zaka to try and keep it a little bit more expensive. But for GR Gaming, they're putting rounds up on the board, and this is actually causing a bit of a threat here on map number two. Six up. Four to the good. At the very least, a tied half for GR Gaming, possibly, and more likely than that, even more so. Lin Vision. Momentum certainly has shifted in the second half, or the latter part of that second half. The comeback from GR has carried on into this round, into this map up. And they truly have run with this miracle. I think it just shows how impactful that second round actually was, right? Yeah. Like, what the ramifications have been, the way that the CT economy has been, the, the idea that you were down one and four, and now the added pressure of not winning immediate rifle rounds like you were able to do on map number one. It's incendiary at the ready against the smokes and flashes coming in towards the canals control solo. And keep on pushing. Starry incendiaries it. Make sure he cannot get into electric itself. No way. And GR Gaming starting to slow the pace. Come down round number nine. Molly in towards Dark is going to force Starry further back, but actually get out towards a corner and just an immediate pre aim towards that angle. Flash forward against West Melon. Salo's ready for it. Secondary kill. Five on three, Lin Vision have no choice but to back off, concede the B site again, and therefore concede the round. And therefore, on top of that, concede the half to GR. It really feels like right now, deal with Starry win the round. Like, that is what's happening with GR. They are constantly targeting this E box line. And right there, I mean, you, you normally think to yourself, if you get mollied out towards E-Box, you either smoke down or you just move immediately. And to, to tuck yourself out towards a corner, to not hear the continuous tick straight away, that's a tell to the T-side. He's out towards a corner, hit him with the pre-aim. West Mellon knows that he, he has to try his best to, to retrade that, to make the round somewhat winnable. GR are constantly pressuring that area of the map. Plant down, secured. And again, no real retaking potential for Lin Vision. Separately, and hope they can get some exit frags, particularly if this AWP indeed does land onto Wii QT.
Number seven will be on the board of GR. They have won the half. Lin Vision have at least gotten away with a handful of rifles. And sustain another buy back into the next, but it's a case of converting those buys into rounds themselves, or we could indeed be seeing Nuke at the tail end of the series, the way we counted it out so early, but... Well, as this one goes on, it continues to look more and more likely. And this is where you've probably got to start seeing some tax coming through from, from Linvision, because you have to reflect to, to map number one and say, we were probably expecting 13-3, 13-2, like a, a pretty dominant affair after a 10-2 half, and instead we saw the, the struggles to close. We saw the, the struggle final few rounds. It's a fairly similar scenario here in the first half of Anubis where they're, they're not quite closing the opportunities. They're giving rounds over to their opponents and it's starting to get out of order. Things need to change quickly. Trying to find Starry again here in the electric control. Zaka. Cross set. Amelia's going to get challenged by QQ God meanwhile. Several players up behind that black man's party to catch the man blind and he's just going to get sprayed down. Riddled with bullets removed from play. Zaka, the best he can do is put Molotovs ahead of that smoke and try and stall for time. But they are pressing on ahead of that smoke. Salo with another good kill. The M4 of G swapped out to from the AWP. He's sending that off right back into the T-side hands. They're desperate to get a pick back in, but no trades found by the CTs. Finally, West Mellon comes in from heaven to remove two, but his backup is gone elsewhere on the map. The B site's open. It's another clutch that GR should be able to hold on to. I'm surprised that West Mellon's even going out here towards Cave. This is showing that he's actually going to try and attempt the clutch. Making noise. I know where he is. Or do they? Perhaps not. Sneak into the smoke. No one's watching it. Backs might be turned. It's a case of timing from here. Engage the first. Spot the second. Where's the third? The AWP now known. West Mellon has the info to work with. But has he got the timings? Can he isolate these two players? The M4 against Mediocrity takes it to a Quadra. Will this be the ace for the man? He knows that WeQT is somewhere around that incendiary. Extinguished by the smoke itself, but unable to win the spray. What an effort for West Mellon. Guess he had to go for that just to try to secure some rounds for Linvision, but... In the end, it was too much to handle. It's a very good effort, and you can see the way that he uses the utility to close off any opportunity of both of those T-side players working together. Smoke off Electric, try and deal with the player that was out there towards Glyph in the backside position, get the incendiary down towards a pillar. It doesn't quite land to the position that he would have liked. GR, though, I think it just showed, again, early entry out towards A. Amelia just caught, even Starry caught on that rotation out towards Electric again. GR are finding so much success on T-side, and this is a map that Linvision win internationally. Their highest pick map in the entire pool. Their go-to in best of threes, and they are down two to eight against GR Gaming. Could be a similar half, a similar first half to what we saw on map number one, just in the opposite direction. Lin Vision need to find the formula because so far they have tried so many things that have not worked. Starry's not gotten going at all in this map. He's on a single kill. Meanwhile, you've got a couple of players on double digits on GR's side of things and many more that are keeping pace. Individual impact has been perfect for them so far, but G isn't going to go down so quietly. Neither is Westman, and those two picks in mid reduced them to three, and those three remaining going into the main control, setting ready for a very quick A pop bust through. Zach has gone down. Amelia has caught a trade. The backup is on the way, but Amelia is going down before it gets here. G able to find a trade, though, and QQ God is all alone in his own one versus three clutch here. Bomb dropped on site. Needs to get picked up and planted. He's got to worry about some of the repositions and coming in quickly. He wants to take a fight. He's looking out to Bricks, looking out to Camera, out to Heaven. He's waiting, but look at the respect the CTs are giving. No one is extending forward right now. They're waiting for the bomb to go down. Waiting for the timer to expire. Flashes in against G will keep him blinded. QQ God has heard several players, particularly Starry in the back, who will come in for that backstab and remove him from play. Remove the round from GR's grasp and finally break that streak to bring LVG into number three on their CT side. The best they can do is four at this half, though, Dweg. It's the last round of the half coming up. That was a very unorthodox CT setup there for Linvision. Two on A and two mid with Starry, the only one down on B who's, who's had a difficult game. 
So I think it just shows there for Lin Vision. They realized that they needed to change something. The double peek from sort of the back camera angle and out there from Temple was very successful for those opening couple of picks. And GR could just not have anticipated another two players to be on A after two mid. Zaka very nicely done onto WeQT. First frag going the way of LVG this time. Mid control. Established and held by the CT forces. Two men on the B-bomb site. Molotov sent as Starry is forced out to take an engagement. Damn near gets two kills for it. Only the one man QQ's low. West Melon's got two to see and actually goes falling to remind him next. So three versus three. G struggling with his own spray. Backup's on the way, but the bomb plant will be secured here. Now, Zaka's coming through on that backstab out from main. He needs to get some distraction. He needs to get some eyes pinned out towards Electric and from Cave, but he has to give up the fight because the peak comes in from QQ. A reminder and Mediocrity, the last two players at the main. Mediocrity center of the side gets that one. Zaka with the trade back. Reminder is so low HP, but so is G. Seen to the shoulder bait. The engagement found. The one versus one. He needs one decent headshot, but Zaka says no to secure the retake and the fourth for Lin Vision. Perhaps not the first half that they wanted, but it's a basis to build from four to the good for GR as they head to the CT side after the break. Times are tough for Lin Vision. Not quite the first half they wanted. Down by four against GR. Something I never thought I was going to say at the start of the day. But alas, that is what we see here on Anubis. But it is their T side, Dweg. Is the comeback nigh? I mean, it has to start from here. Because look at what happened in the first half. Win the pistol, lose the anti-eco, and then go down 1-5. They can't afford to let that happen again. They have to get off to a good start here on T side. I cannot afford to allow those... Uh, uh 
issues to plague them again as well. Then BC in the second round. Of course, Setji are up for this whole situation. But Zach is not going to allow it to happen again. Reminder, and we QT down mediocrity. Only man to get a trade. And even he's been dealt with in the mid control. Four on two. Salo and QQ God. Salo is playing here to the smoke. Gets a decent kill in. Can he get a second or a third? Apparently not. Rushed down by the Glock, but both players run out of ammo. Starry's there with the backup, and QQ God all alone in the center of the bomb site. Dealt with by Amelia. Two taps to the head and the pistol for Lin Vision. I would say Lin Vision were quite fortunate there. I mean, that is a miss smoke out there towards Temple, and they're lucky to not have a, a worse outcome than what actually came through. Oftentimes, if you have a miss mode like that, it's not quite being cleared correctly, and it, it maybe takes a little bit more time to round the quarter out from Temple rather than just diving into that A split and getting into camera straight away. And what helps the outcome was that initial exchange, right? Out there from house and for doors, you could see that the, the Julies was, was hoping that there'd maybe be like a bait and switch or a timing that gets overlooked. And unfortunately, in that that spare at the moment, you're looking straight at the wall and, and bang, you're just gone instantly. Here's a rare sight for you, Dwight. A tactical pause, because I don't think we've seen any so far over the course no. of this series. And uh, you were talking about Lin Vision taking them out in the first half. They didn't do that either. It's actually come in from GR as soon as they lose that pistol round. I mean, it, it makes you wonder, are they going to force now? Um... Or is it just oh, they tried to do yeah, a tech? They tried to do a tech, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Benefit of the doubt, they tried to call a tactical. And there was just a technical issue. Let's just let's at least have faith that there was some tactical pause coming in, that there was some discussion. Well, I mean, they get the, the Blast player back in time. So they've got all five ready to go for <laughs> this eco round. I mean, I don't think it matters too much because it is just an eco round. No major upgrades either. A couple of P250s in, but that's about it for the GR camp. LVG be hunting for number six to convert upon their pistol and try and maintain the T side presence here. Got the ump coming through from Starry, not a weapon that you get to see all that often. Been seeing quite a bit of MP5 SD action recently. We know the, the MP7 is, is liked from, from guys like Nerds as well. Yeah, I feel like uh, we did have a bit of an ump meta. Don't see much of it anymore. Yep. Amelia, though, on a slow walk out towards A, could start realizing there's a bit of a stack towards mid quickly. Starry gets a 3k in mid, meanwhile. Nice tap with the P250 as well. Two of those kills coming in on the UMP. So uh, double up 1,200 bucks of bonus cash. So he is the richer man over on Lin Vision. Meanwhile, GR just looking to build upon their lost bonuses and get their rifles in for round number 15. M4s on four. Mediocrity is also going to go in with the M4. Not going to lack in the rifles for a little bit extra utility. Everybody has a smoke and a variation of three HEs, one incendiary and one flashbang across the CT side. They're still using this as a bit of a bonus round for Lin Vision with both that MAC-10 and the UMP. Don't see as many bonus rounds in MR12 anymore just because of the lack of rounds to work with. But what we're seeing right here is an all-out aggressive maneuver. Fast, in from house and out towards doors. It's a one-for-one -one trade, but the pace isn't stopping. Four on four situation. Westbound's going to continue pressing as well. HE sent into the smoke. Does it all of it, though? Provides a gap for QQ instead to work with. And he's mowed down three for it. GR in an instant take control. It looked as if there, with that smoke just being a little bit deeper, that that HE getting pulled through does not break it entirely, and you just get caught in the act. Amelia on that lurk out towards A was good in the early portion of the round, but that one right there, he's the last player, the last one to at least find something. And for GR, you have to look at that from their perspective. First rifle round of the second half. Yes, you could say that it was a bonus from Lin Vision's point of view. It's a round victory. Three players staying alive, an AK to get recovered. That's everything you're looking for. Beauty of a moment for QQ God, top fragger of his team. In part, thanks to that 3K, but just the impact that it gained. Lin Vision losing all their mid control and every advantage that they had. Star is desperate to try and pull off similar uh, stances but without nearly as much information or vision as what his uh, opponent had in the previous round. Salo, meanwhile, defending out this electric control and he's got two T-side players to deal with and they continue pressing onwards here. Damage being sustained. West Mellon out towards main. Dealt with mediocrity. Can follow it up. 
A two for two. You start thinking for Lin Vision. Where's the response? No one's even in a trading position. Basically, everyone's out there towards canals. They can start working their way back into the mid control. Amelia's down on 53 points of health. Zachra on 45. Uh, this feels unwinnable right now. Salo, hyper extension out from B, and he catches two and the bomb. That should secure the round. Another 3k from a GR member. Amelia. One on five in this clutch. Bomb not even in his grasp. But the wrap all the way out towards mid for that. And surely the CT should get an inkling as to what's going on relatively soon. Might not be aware of the save, but even that's being hunted out towards the main control. So Amelia's really got no escape. About to face into QQ God. Does lose his life, but we QT is there for the responsive, and it's 10 on the board of GR. I actually look at this rifle right around Jay and say that's probably the map winner. Like you're 10 6 up, you're up against the anti eco in round number 17. I actually don't think there's many more chances for Lin Vision to give for them to say, okay, that they can close this in 2 0. This is a fine margin where they are at a quite a large deficit. This is uncomfortable. This is a very large surprise. Lin Vision has only dropped a single map in seven best of threes in this regular season. And to think that they could drop it to GR on their map pick is just wild. Come the blocks. Into mid, damaged up, mowed down, mediocrity with two and three. Opposite of his namesake right now. Everyone else on LVG will fall. Emilia caught off in the mid position. Dealt with the last player standing. All five alive for the CT side. 11 to 6 on the scoreboard. And only a couple more for GR Gaming to win out Anubis. And of all the maps to take in a series like this, mm. it had to be Anubis that they would upset against LVG. Yeah, even the, the map that was uh, that was lost, funny enough, from Lin Vision in the regular season was their map pick of Anubis to, to New Happy. Uh, they lost their map pick of map number one, only getting eight rounds. They went to map two and map three to close it out. There was an overtime in map three. But Lin Vision are being tested. Triple A, perhaps an aggressive maneuver. Cindy is down, the main set. Emilia engages one. Lin Vision not ready to die just yet. It doesn't feel like Salo down. Reminder. Reminder of who's in the back lines of the site. And Emilia's saying none of that. Deal with him. Find the B bomb site, find the plant, and find the round. And not much that GR could have done about that. Again, they brought a triple A setup where it looked like they wanted to prod pretty aggressively towards A main, maybe make a bit of a play happen in the mid round. And instead, Amelia's just come out dry. Just literally swung from Electric, got that first kill, and then pretty much cracked open the bomb site, get out to that back plat area, end up just working that edge of the smoke, the edge of the utility, find the multi-frag, allow the seventh round. For GR, money's still pretty good, so save on to the double AK, the M4, maybe even get an AWP forward to Wakuti and look to get a rifle round. Come the next. See if Starry can hunt some more CT players, remove these rifles from play, and that seems to be the case. They've got cash on GR, so they'll be able to invest. They lose weapons like this AK, that's pretty important firepower removed from the CT forces, and now the man's been seen indeed. We QT will go down. So staving off the map point, and now within four of GR. And this is going to be some very contentious rounds. I would say the next two rifle rounds have a lot of pivotal momentum for both teams for gr to close out the last couple to take the victory to move it to a third map for lin vision to keep cycling a strong economy flow to make it uncomfortable for gr try and get them into a buy eco status lin vision are bringing a lot of players this actually might be a rush a eh? faster starry do slow it down as they make their way out. Oh, nice nade placed right there from the GR Gaming camp. They read that one. Gives them advantage now in these engagements. A re-smoke out there towards A main could not be timed any better. Either have to cancel or pop through it. Nades to expose one. They are seeing where QQ's held out. Aggressive. The nades continue to keep that uh, smoke cleared up. And backup starts to rotate in mediocrity. Sprays through the smoke. Gets to Amelia with one back. But mediocrity's in for the triple. 
And everyone's down over on the side of Lin Vision. Zachar and G trying to pick up the pieces. The bomb's dropped in the open. There's a backstab also incoming. And Mediocrity is still standing with his back up on the site itself. Bombs in their control. This should be number 12. I'm very surprised that Lin Vision didn't just cancel there. You could see that they wanted to go in for a little bit of a quicker tempo. You could see they wanted to lean A early round. But once it gets re smote like that, you either need to double pop or cancel. And they try to pop through it, breaking the smoke, getting a couple of flashes forward, and it's so uncomfortable. One kill is all that gets granted. And Zaka and G, I mean, they've got to even anticipate a backstab potential. And there it is, reminder. Kill on Zaka, G, all that remains. One versus four, 20 seconds to stay alive, because there's no way he's winning the clutch. Reminder will prove the point. Map points for GR Gaming. Lin Vision need five to overtime. Now, even looking at the circumstance of not being able to get a bomb plant, you look at guys like West Melon and Zaka and say they can buy. Of course they can. They can get the AKs forward, but they're not going to have the full util sets. A single molly and smoke for West Melon, nothing for Zaka, a Krieg out for G. And still, the lack of tacticals continue for Lin Vision. Trying to engage into compositions again very early into the rounds. This time not majorly grouped up into that uh, upper position. Amelia does tank an A to the face though. So start again for GR. Can you win the fight though? UQ hidden behind the pillar here. And those footsteps of Mortal should force him out into the open. And Nate to follow it up as well. But he still wins the engagement on the first, not quite the second. Amelia keeping control with a 4 versus 4. Mediocre to wrap around that corner to make it 4v3. Uh, just the press again, success continuing to flow out there to the A site. And you've got Salo working in towards Electric. When that smoke starts to clear, he might try and jiggle down, see what's going on out there to the canal. Starry, he has to get this pick to camera. That's the only way that they can split towards A. Goes quiet. Mediocrity has missed the mark on the bomb carrier. His time is so well. Now been seen. Mediocrity can take the pick anyway. Two left standing. The mid player needs to fight back, and Weak UT gives him nothing. And same story for West Melon. 13 to 7, and GR Gaming have done what we believe to be impossible winning out Lin Vision's best map of Anubis. What a moment.